Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. We have been talking about heteroscedasticity and in the previous few lectures we have seen the different tests for understanding if our regression model has some heteroscedasticity problem present. Now, it is one thing to know if there is a problem, but in the other it is another thing to actually bring some remedy to the problem, right. Now, looking at the nature of you know the heteroscedasticity or how the you know the error term is distributed, if we can sort of try to conceptualize it like this. So, let us say if we look at the distribution of the error term, it is uh, it looks like this usually, usually there could be different other patterns of the distribution, but usually it is like this. When I have my e i values here and let us say here I have y i predicted. Now, one thing I can do is that I can actually see that for some of the observations the error term the you know the, the variance of the error term let us say I can also write the variance actually it is better to write variance. So, the variance of error term is actually low or less and in those cases what I can do is those observations I would actually prefer and what I can do is I can actually assign more weight in my regression equation to, to those uh, variance you know those observations where the variance is actually less and I assign low weight to the variances which are actually high and this kind of regression is actually called weighted, weighted least square regression or in short WLS okay, regression. Now, it is difficult to actually understand which are the observations for which you have this variance of the error term low and to sort of assign corresponding weights. So, in order to actually sort of achieve that, we adopt different means uh, to reduce the variance. So, to understand how we can reduce the variance of the error term, let us uh, we will just try to you know understand conceptually how that is a possibility and let us uh, let us just do some little bit of maths for that. So, let us say I have my regression equation which is y i is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 let us say x 1 x 2 i and I can have let us say u i u i ok. Now, I know that the variance of the error term is sigma i square and I want to get rid of the variance because I want to get rid of the variance of the error term. So, one way to get rid of the variance is simply dividing <coughs> all the observations with the variance or the standard deviation. So, if I let us say the standard deviations corresponding, the, corresponding to the error term is sigma i and if I divide all the observations with this sigma i values, so I can actually get rid of the variance of the error term and how is that possible? So, let us say if I want to understand the variance of this new term which is u i by u i by sigma i by sig my stylus is creating trouble sigma i and this is going to be expectation of u i by sigma i square and we do not have the other term because that is basically 0 and it is going to be 1 by sigma i square sigma i square and I have expectation of u i square which is nothing but sigma i square. So, sigma i square sigma i square cancels out and all I have is a value 1. So, it is basically I standardize it and I have now a constant variance for the error term which is equal to 1 and that is something I really covered because I want this variance to be constant right. Now, this is one way of dealing with this and we can sort of you know write the modified uh, regression equation by dividing uh, this uh, whole equation with the sigma i. Now, this is uh, all right, but it is very difficult to actually understand the variance of the error term. So, you really do not get the variance of the error term. So, since you do not get the variance of the error term, what we do is sometimes we use a proxy. Let us say my error term, this variance of the error term or the standard deviation of the error term 
let's say is actually varying with some uh, variable z i which is observable okay so let's say in in our case let's say our suspect variable so when we say that okay the the error term is actually varying with some x variable so that is my suspect variable so i can say that the variance of the error term is varying with the x variable so i know the x or the z variable here because that is given to me but i am not given the value of sigma ui sigma ui so i can always assume that i can replace sigma ui with zi with some constant term lambda okay and the beauty of it we just going to see it so if we uh, take the variance of let's say if i divide sigma ui zi and i really don't need to know the value of you know sigma ui here and if i take the variance of this what i will get is essentially in the similar manner i will get lambda square zi square by zi square and which will leave me a value of lambda square which is again a constant term so the moment i have a constant term its our purpose is served right or we basically wanted to have a constant variance and even here we don't need to have the value of lambda because you know all we need is a constant variance so as long as that is satisfied i am fine so that's what we have to <coughs> what we can possibly uh, the measure we can possibly adopt so you know like using this we can actually you know like just instead of zi we can use a suspect variable which is our xi so instead of zi we can also use our xi which is a suspect variable for example in our previous uh, example where we have uh, plotted uh, the error term with my suspect variable general education and i saw that it is actually you know uh, my general education is actually influencing my error term so what i can do is i can uh, divide the whole equation with xi so what i can do is i can do is basically divide the whole so i do not have since i do not have this what i can do yi let's say beta 1 plus beta 2 xi plus ui so what i can do because of this assumption here i can actually divide yi or the whole equation with xi so that would serve the purpose so basically we are following the same logic here beta 1 by xi here i will have beta 2 and then i will have ui by xi so basically dividing by a variable which is um, you know which can reduce the variance of the error term we can also divide by some proxy of the xi so i will give you an example uh, of this so let us say we have an assumption that you know the countries which are economically well off their manufacturing their, the the share of gdp in the manufacturing sector or the output in manufacturing sector is actually a uh, sort of proportional to the gdp output of manufacturing sector so we essentially assume that a country to have a good uh, gdp has to have or you know should would would sort of lead to a high uh, output for the manufacturing sector and let's say we actually plot all these observations here and we see something like this this is something like this all right and here it is gdp now the problem here is some countries we have smaller gdp and for them like if the output of manufacturing is actually influenced by gdp or not i am really not sure because or because it is very so error term is it becomes so divergent is very difficult to actually understand uh, the relationship between out, output of manufacturing and gdp and when my regression equation is here is going to be say let us say output manufacturing is equal to let us say beta 1 plus beta 2 gdp plus some error term okay now the same problem the same again the heteroscedrosis is present and i have to have some variable to actually divide the uh, you know both the y and x is now i can do one thing i can actually divide by gdp uh, for both y and x variables also 
I can use some other proxy uh, that is actually you know indicating GDP and which could be for example the population. So I can basically divide the y and x's with population and here what I can do is output manufacturing by population. Let me reduce the screen size is equal to beta 1 by population, beta 2 into GDP by population plus U by population. So this is one way of actually addressing the heteroscedasticity problem and once we uh, actually do that, we will see that the heteroscedasticity is actually gone and we will see something, the result of it is going to be something where we can have a slightly better distribution of the error terms or if you want to again plot uh, the GDP per capita and output uh, is sort of you know manufacturing, you will see that the, uh, the error term is actually less heteroscedasticity. So that is what we want to achieve and this we are not going to do this hands on here, we are going to give you the, so we are not going to solve it here, but we are going to give you a hands on for this. So that is one way of actually solving it. There could be other ways, for example, we have seen previously that you can have this you know functional misspecification. Okay? So the functional misspecification could be like I can have something like more of a logarithmic uh, you know uh, relationship I can have let us say y my output my GDP is equal to let us say a x beta to some error term okay? where my let us say y is my GDP, y is GDP and x is the say output in manufacturing. Now in the previous case we are, we are thinking uh, that the out you know y and the output in manufacturing are actually related linearly but let us say this is the actual functional form, this is the actual functional form. So if this is the actual functional form, so what you have to do is instead of running a linear regression we have to use this uh, logarithmic, uh, you have to take logarithm on both the sides so it is going to be a essentially a log log sort of uh, regression okay and and then then if you perform the regression so we have seen for model mis specification the functional mis specification we would we might have the problem of heteroscedasticity but if i do something like this that problem may go okay and if the problem goes away then we can also get rid of the heteroscedasticity problem there could be other ways like we can have different subgroups and we can use different subgroups and we can run different regressions for different subgroups. We have seen that for different subgroups we can have you know different levels of heteroscedasticity. For example, we have seen something like this error term square is my y hat and let us say this is group 1, group 2 group 3. So we can also actually run the regression separately for these different groups to actually get rid of the heteroscedasticity problem. We can identify you know like uh, but if, if there is any one group that where the heteroscedasticity is high or if we actually run the regression separately we can actually see that completely the heteroscedasticity problem is gone. So we will do some hands on on this kind of you know remedial measures and with this we will come to a conclusion uh, about the lecture on heteroscedasticity and that is one of the important Gauss Markov assumptions which you need to fulfill when we want to have the best linear unbiased estimator. So, in this we will end the lecture here.